Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will be reviewing the Chidi X Plus 3 printer, another fast printer that runs Clipper firmware. Unlike those Clipper bed slingers, this X Plus 3 is a Core XY fully enclosed machine, making it seem to be a real challenger for the Bamboo Lab P1P and the X1 Carbon. Let's take a look at the hardware specs. It's a Core XY machine with a build volume of 280x280x270. 280 280 it's not only fully enclosed, but it also has an actively heated chamber that allows you to keep the ambient temperature up to 65 degrees Celsius, and the enclosure also comes with LEDs. This stock machine comes with two sets of hot ends, one regular hot end with the copper alloy nozzle that allows for the printing of regular filament, and one hot end with the hardened steel nozzle for printing carbon fiber and other abrasive filament. They are both high flow rate hot ends that can reach up to 35 millimeters per second cubed, and the maximum nozzle temperature can go up to 350 degrees Celsius. The extruder is also a new design that uses a 9.5 to 1 gear ratio. For the cooling system, besides the hot end part cooling fan, it also has an auxiliary cooling fan installed at the right side of the machine. The maximum acceleration is 20,000 millimeters per second squared. It runs Clipper firmware using a 64-bit processor similar to the Big Tree Tech CB1 or the Creality Sonic Pad. It uses TMC2209 with sensorless homing on the X and Y axis and uses an optical limit switch on the Z axis. The Z axis is supported by a dual Z axis lead screw. For the motion system, the Y and Z axis are both using linear rods, and the X axis is using carbon rods. It comes with an inductive sensor for auto bed leveling, and the print surface is a double-sided PEI textured spring steel sheet. Other than the standard filament holder, there is also an airtight filament box that you can put a pack of desiccant inside. The screen is a 5-inch touchscreen. It supports Wi-Fi and Ethernet network printing, and it has two power supplies that provide a combined power of 800 watts. It has a pretty nice appearance, and it has the same style as other Chidi printers. Overall, the hardware specs seem pretty strong, and the machine is aggressively priced at $799. I would like to thank Chidi for sending me this machine to review, and with that, let's get started. The machine comes in one piece, so no assembly is required. All you need to do is take it out of the box, remove the protective materials, Cut off the zip ties used to secure the motion system, and remove the cardboard protecting the print head. Apart from the machine, there is also an extra hot end, some tools, cables, a very simple user manual, a USB drive, a leveling card, an airtight filament box, and a 500 gram roll of ABS glass fiber filament. Let's turn the machine on and run through the setup wizard. It tells you to remove the items inside the machine, which I have already done. There are also four screws you need to remove to release the bed. After that, remove the two plastic blocks underneath the bed. It will now home the machine, and we are ready to set the Z offset using the provided leveling card. Then, it will run a round of auto bed leveling. As there are no leveling knobs under the bed, it just lets the inductive sensor do its job. After probing 16 points on the bed, we can save it and it will continue with input shaper calibration. The accelerometer is built in inside the print head. It will calibrate the x-axis followed by the y-axis. Okay, we can now load some filament. Just snap the filament holder at the back, insert the filament into the Bowden tube as a filament guide to the direct extruder. The process is pretty smooth and we are now all set. If you decide to use network printing, you can plug in the ethernet cable. I will try to connect it to my Wi-Fi network. Just select the SSID and enter the password. You will see the IP address of the machine show up here. Okay, let's open the slicer and start our test prints. I have installed the latest version of their Chidi print, which is 6.5.1. And as you can see, the printer is automatically detected. I will start with the 3D Benchy, and I will just use the default PLA profile without changing anything. When I slice the file, the estimated time is 34 minutes. I will just upload the G-code file to the printer over Wi-Fi. 
The printing temperature is set to 220 degrees Celsius, as fast printing requires a higher nozzle temperature to melt the filament faster. I will start by using Airy 1 PLA. After a few layers, it seems that 220 degrees Celsius is not high enough to melt the filament fast enough, and I experienced some layer adhesion issues. I stopped the print and resliced the model using a 235 degrees Celsius nozzle temperature. This time, the print finished without any issues, and the actual printing time was 36 minutes and 35 seconds. The print quality is alright. It's better than most fast Betzlinger's 45-minute benchies, and the cooling also looks fine. It strings a little bit more than I would prefer, which may be caused by the high temperature. As Chidi advertised this machine as being capable of printing a 15-minute benchie, I asked them for the G-code file. They said they tested it with their own PLA filament and hatchbox filament, which have lower printing temperatures. So, I still have a roll of Chidi Red PLA, and I will use it to test their 15-minute Benchy G-code file. The nozzle temperature was set to 230 degrees Celsius, and there were no adhesion issues. The Benchy was completed in 15 minutes and 5 seconds. The layers and the surface are clean, with just a tiny bit of stringing, and the cooling looks good as well. Surprisingly, the result looks even better than the 37-minute Benchy, but I noticed that this Benchy is sliced to have thicker layers, so it seems like it was printing at a 0.24mm layer height instead of 0.2mm. But overall, the result is pretty good. I purchased another roll of Hatchbox PLA from Amazon and attempted to print the Benchy again. Although it requires a lower temperature, like the one printed with the Chidi filament, I still think the result of Chidi's filament is the best, followed by Airy One, and finally the bronze one printed with Hatchbox PLA. For those who may be wondering how these benches compare to the ones printed by Bamboo Lab, I used the same Airy One, Chidi, and Hatchbox PLA filament to print benches with the Bamboo Lab P1P, using the 3D Benchy G-code that came with the machine. The printing time was 20 minutes, and you can compare the results. When using Airy One PLA, the surface quality of the Bamboo Lab P1P was slightly better with cleaner layers, as the Bamboo Lab can print Airy One PLA at just 220 degrees Celsius, while the Chidi requires 235 degrees Celsius, so the cooling of the Bamboo Lab was also better. However, when using Chidi PLA filament, which has a lower printing temperature requirement, the Chidi 15-minute Benchy looked very similar to the Bamboo Lab Benchy. When using Hatchbox PLA, both Benchies didn't look as good as those printed with Airy One and Chidi filament, with similar layer quality that was not too great but still acceptable. I will now use the Chidi PLA to print a calibration cube. The 10 minute cube turned out quite well, other than some slight ringing on the surface. The cooling of the tips of both the X and Y axes is adequate, and the dimensions on all the axes are accurate. Then, I will switch back to Airy One PLA and print a Jeep. I scaled up this Jeep to 150%, so a normal printer like an Ender 3S1 printing at 50 milliliters per second would take over a day while the Snapmaker Artisan printing at 160 mm per second would take 12 and a half hours. The Bamboo Slicer's estimated time is 5 hours and 50 minutes. The Chidi Slicer estimated time is 6 hours and 42 minutes.
ended up taking 5 hours and 44 minutes, which is an hour faster than the estimated time. The print quality is okay. Other than a little bit of stringing, the print quality is similar to the 12 hour print by the Snapmaker Artisan at 160 mm per second. It saved more than half of the printing time, and while the layer lines of the Snapmaker are slightly better, I would still much rather save over 6 hours in print time. Next, I will try to print a hex wrench holder with Voxel PLA Pro. This is a functional part with simple geometry, and it will only take around 2 hours. I also printed one with the Ultimaker S3, and the result looks similar. Neither of them are very clean on the top surface, but overall, the print quality is acceptable. After that, I will try some PETG. Generally, PETG can't be printed as quickly as PLA, but I will still use the default profile, which prints at 180 mm per second. However, I experienced under extrusion, so I will reslice the model at 80 mm per second instead and try again. It took 10 hours and 4 minutes to finish, and the result of using this Airy One transparent PETG looks pretty great. Compared to a normal speed printer that requires over 19 hours, it is almost two times faster. Then, I will try to print an ABS crate. As this printer is fully enclosed and has an actively heated chamber, I would just print it without glue. A normal printer requires over 11 hours to print this model, but according to the estimated printing time, at a speed of 220 mm per second, this printer will only take 3 hours and 48 minutes. It actually finished in 3 hours and 55 minutes. Without glue, one of the corners is a little warped and the print also stringed a bit. There is no layer separation thanks to the 55 degrees Celsius ambient temperature, and the bottom and the inside of the crate also look okay. I try to print the same model again with some Elmer's Craft Bond Extra Strength glue applied, and this time the bottom didn't warp, but besides that, the rest of the model looks pretty much the same. After that, I will try some TPU. This Airy One TPU is easy to print, and even a stock under 3 can print it without issues. However, as TPU can't be printed too quickly, I will just use a slightly faster speed at 60 mm per second. It took 4 hours and 20 minutes, and the part looks awesome. It's a perfect print, and it works pretty well, so I have no complaints. Finally, I will try some engineering grade materials, starting with a cheaty ABS glass fiber. I will print a phone tripod mount. I will print the body and the knob with ABS GF. It seems printing at 200 mm per second works pretty well for this ABS glass fiber. I also made a new top with the cold shoe mount for me to mount a light alongside the phone. I will use PA12 nylon carbon fiber to print this part at the same 200 mm per second speed, which took 43 minutes to complete. As this roll of filament has been open for a few months, it doesn't look as good as the ABS glass fiber, but they still fit together nicely, and I can now add an extra LED light to my phone for filming. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this printer, starting with the pros. 1. The hardware of this printer is outstanding. You get a Core X5 machine with linear rods and a carbon rod motion system, a high flow hot end, a strong dual gear extruder, two sets of hot ends, a 350 degrees Celsius maximum printing temperature, auto bed leveling, a 5 inch touchscreen, and two power supplies with a total power of 800 watts. The best part is the fully enclosed, actively heated chamber. For the price of $799, the value is insane. There's no way you could find a printer with better hardware at this price. 2. 
the print speed is really fast. Despite the design of many of its components, including the motion system and the hot end, being heavily drawn from the Bamboo Lab machines, in terms of speed, it is actually surprisingly in line with the Bamboo Lab X1 and P1P. 3. When printing at a normal speed, it's as good as any printer. When printing at a high speed, the print quality is still okay. It's definitely better than any so-called fast printing Betzinger that I've ever tested. 4. The quality control is in line with other cheating machines that I've tested, including the XMAX and the iFast. They are both solid machines and have had pretty good feedback in the 3D printing community. Now for the cons. This section is mainly about the screen firmware. When starting a print job using the Chidi Slicer or the Fluid Web Interface, the thumbnail cannot be displayed. However, the touchscreen works fine when starting a print job. The Chidi Slicer, although it's a fork of Kira, works well, and Chidi added their own features and maintains it better than other manufacturers who have skinned Kira. The screen firmware still has some minor issues, such as displaying unknown files and becoming unresponsive. The motherboard has its own storage memory, so we should be able to just print without a USB drive. However, the screen won't display files stored in the internal memory unless a USB drive is inserted. It won't be a problem even if the USB drive is blank, but you have to insert something. As for other minor bugs, screen messages will occasionally appear in Chinese, even if English is selected as the language. These issues should not significantly affect the printer's functionality, print speed, or quality, but I still hope that Chidi will release a new screen firmware soon to address these issues. In my opinion, using the standard clipper screen would be a better option. Similar to the Creality Sonic Pad, adding its features on top of the standard clipper screen UI, or like the FL Sun V400, just using a completely standard clipper screen will work fine. Most people are more familiar with the Clipper screen user interface, and it has fewer bugs and works better with the Fluid or Mainsail web interface. In terms of hardware, I'm quite happy with pretty much everything, except that even though the swappable hot end is a good idea, the current process for changing it is not ideal. To replace the hot end, you need to open the cover, unscrew two screws, then remove the hot end cooling fan by unscrewing another two screws. Next, you need to unscrew another four screws on the back cover of the print head and unplug two cables from the breakout board. To install the new hot end, you need to repeat the same steps in reverse order. Overall, this process requires you to loosen and retighten a total of eight screws, which is pretty time consuming. To make this process better, I suggest that the back cover should follow the same snap on design as the front cover. Additionally, providing another cooling fan with the extra hot end would eliminate the need to remove the fan from the existing hot end. This will reduce the number of screws required to only two, making the whole process much easier and smoother for the user. Finally, I would like to suggest that Chidi make the two USB ports that came with the Clipper motherboard accessible and prepare the Clipper firmware and printer.cfg for previous Chidi printers. This would allow this new Chidi printer to link up with two older Chidi machines and control them all using Clipper. If this is implemented, I believe that every existing Chidi user would be happy to buy another machine from Chidi to boost the performance of their existing machines. As many of the older models like the X Max are pretty awesome, they deserve something better than Marlin and should be able to print much faster than 50 to 60 millimeters per second with Clipper. In conclusion, the value of the hardware of this machine is insane, as it's targeting the $699 Bamboo Lab P1P and the $1199 X1 series as its direct competitors. This Chidi X Plus 3 is priced just $100 more than the Bamboo Lab entry-level P1P machine, and offers you an actively heated chamber that even the X1 doesn't have. But, Chidi doesn't come with the micro lighter on the Bamboo Lab X1 for linear advanced calibration and the camera. I saw Chidi also added the same filament cutter on the hot end as the Bamboo Lab machines. They may be planning to launch a multi-filament system in the future as well. If you're looking for a fast printing 3D printer with the fully enclosed actively heated chamber without breaking the bank, you should definitely take a look at the new Clipper series from Chidi. I included the link below in the description. That's all I wanted to share about this machine. If you found this video useful, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. With a total of 800 watts in... in...
is in line with bamboo. Mm. Let's read to you. No! I think my voice is fine now. Just gonna tell you about the pros and cons of the printer. Thank you.